Well, so good to have you with us today. Let me first off say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. It's, we celebrate you today, and this is an exciting day. It's going to be a Mother's Day probably like no other in your lifetime. And so we just want to take a moment. Look, if you have a mother, if you're fortunate enough to have a mother that's still living on this earth today, despite what might be going on with you, uh, make sure you reach out to them in some way, somehow make contact with them and tell them thank you. Tell them you love them for, for being a part of your life and sacrificing in your life today. So we've been in a series called Attitudes over the last three weeks. This is week four of that week one. We talked about choosing hope when you feel hopeless. Week two, we talked about choosing humility when you felt like life was just all about you. And last week, we talked about choosing compassion when you feel contempt. And so today, on Mother's Day, we, we, we've sort of looked at this topic, and we're saying choose purpose over popularity. Choose purpose. We're choosing purpose today over popularity. Now, this series is called Attitudes. And I know that there's no mothers out there that have any attitudes. It's always the kids with the attitudes. And I know that there's no children out there with attitudes because it's always the parents that have the attitudes or the brothers and sisters that have the attitudes. And I know today that there's no husbands out there with any attitudes whatsoever. It's always the wives with the attitudes. And look, I've saved this one, wives, from Mother's Day. I'll let you be the last one in. I know there's no wives out there with attitudes. It's always the husband that has the attitudes. What am I saying when I say all this as we're joking around and, and looking into this situation about attitudes? What am I saying? Is that it's never us with the attitude. It's always someone else, right? Am I right? So I want you to sit back Close your eyes for a moment and imagine a world where everyone likes you. Everyone approves of you. Everyone admires you. Now, pump the brakes just a second. And I want you to wake up from that dream. Because you know that that's not possible. That's never happening. That's not the world that you live in. Now, I want you to imagine with me again. Take a moment and imagine this. Imagine... You don't care that much what people think of you. You're so focused on pleasing God and, and not having um, the approval of people. It doesn't consume you. Now, that's a world that you could have. A world where you're not worried about people's approval. You're more worried about God's approval. You see, the, the foundational text we've been using for this series called Attitudes is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, you must have the same attitude. There's that word. That's where we got it from. You must have the same attitude. Another translation says the same mind. The same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And one of the, our biggest choices that we can make in life is choosing purpose over popularity. Choosing purpose over popularity. You see, but many of us by default... It's our nature. Many of us choose the opposite. We choose popularity over purpose. We choose it the wrong way. And today we want to make a choice to choose purpose over popularity. You see, popularity is acceptance. Popularity is approval of others, approval of men. You see, if you don't know your purpose... You look for acceptance, you look for appro approval in anybody and anything if you don't know purpose, identity, God's divine plan. And so what do we do when we get in those situations where we don't know our purpose? We start asking questions to people. Well, what do you think of me? Do you like this? Do you like, do you like my hair? Do you like my friends? Do you, did you like what I said? You didn't? I didn't want to offend, but do, do, you like, do you like my school? Do you like how we study? Do you like my clothes? What about my car, my apartment? Do, do, you, like, do you like that? Do you like how I dressed it up? Do, do you like the music I like? 
What about this selfie I took? Do you like this selfie? What about the filters? The filter okay? What about the caption? Do you like what I said in the caption? And we'll go on and on looking for other people's approval. Look, we're not living for likes and loves, those hearts on social media. That shouldn't be what we live for. But so many times we find ourselves living for popularity instead of purpose. We'll ask questions like, do I fit in? Do I have their approval? Am I good enough? Do I measure up? You see, and here's the foundational statement I want to to bounce off of for the rest of our time together. You might want to jot this one down. It says, living for the approval of people keeps you from the purposes of God. Living for the approval of people, of man, of our world, keeps you from the purposes of God. You see, any time that we are consumed with what others think about us, we tend to forget and lose focus on what God thinks about us. As long as we're living for the approval, uh, the approval of people, the approval of others, how many know we're not living for the approval of God? So, I want to challenge us today to choose purpose over popularity. And the example I want to start using, we'll use several examples today. The example I want to start off with is Moses. And Moses was born a Hebrew slave, but he was raised in Egyptian royalty in Pharaoh's palace. So something took place where God intervened and allowed him to to move on and be be raised up in Egyptian royalty. And even though he could have chose comfort, he actually chose calling over comfort. He chose purpose over popularity. And I want to show you this Old Testament figure example for us. But Hebrews in the New Testament gives us a summed up version of it right here. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 says, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose, there's the word, choose purpose over popularity. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. He was sacrificing now for the reward that were to be uh, that he could gain later. That's a principle for us to live by. That's the principle for all of us. He chose calling over comfort. He chose purpose over popularity. You see, there's power in purpose. There is true power in purpose. And look, when I say that word purpose, I know immediately all of us go to, like, what's the purpose of my life? But I want to scale that back because I believe that's revealed to you when you fulfill the little purposes of your life. In other words, the the everyday purposes that God will show us and allow us to be a part of in our life. The Holy Spirit will show us purposes daily in our life. In other words, the principle is if you're faithful in the little, I'll make you ruler over much. So he'll show you the little purposes day in and day out until it grows you into the main purpose that he has for your life. So in other words, when you ask the Holy Spirit, you wake up in the morning and you pray and you ask God, lead me, show me my purpose for today. Use me today, God. And when you do that, he'll show you ways where you can show compassion in the moment on that day, where you can show Uh, humility in the moment on that day to someone, when you can give hope on that day to someone, or when you can bring encouragement to somebody on that day. And when you start with the little things, the little purposes that build up, when you're faithful with the little, he'll show you the bigger picture, the bigger purpose, meaning of life. There is power in purpose. And I want to show you the power in purpose today. The first way I want to show you that is purpose diminishes distractions. The power of purpose diminishes distractions. And one of the biggest distractions for most of us is the curse of comparison. Looking what he or she, the Joneses, the Smiths, looking over our shoulders at what the neighbor or somebody at work might have. Somebody we went to school with. Somebody on social media might have. One of the biggest distractions for most of us is the curse of comparison. She's already finished college, and I ain't even done yet, and and he's making more money than me. 
Why? I don't understand, God. Or, or all my friends are married except me. And I don't even have a house. I'm way behind in this thing. Moms, this is for you on Mother's Day. I'm elbow deep in diapers. And she's got the life. You see, social media, it's a comparison trap. If you don't watch yourself, you'll be comparing your life with everybody you see on that news feed. And if you don't, if you don't watch out, if you're not careful, it'll start dragging you down into this curse of comparison. You see, but purpose diminishes those distractions. Purpose diminishes distractions. There's another example I'd love to use today. I won't read the story to you, but uh, last year I did a, a series on Nehemiah, and here's the summation of what we got out of, out of the series. Let me just tell you the story real quickly. Nehemiah was called to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was in ruins, and God spoke to his heart and said, go back to Jerusalem and build my city and build the walls. Start there. And so as he went on to do that, the king gave him permission and resources to go make it happen. God was behind it, and so he went back to do that. But don't you know when you try to go do the purpose that God called you to do, that there's going to be some distractions along the way? The enemy will send distractions your way and there were some distractions that came to Nehemiah they were by the name of Sanballat and Tobias and they kept trying to make threats and and discourage and try to tear down what Nehemiah was trying to do till finally he had it up to here and he sent word to them and told them he said look I'm doing a great work I can't come down from here I'm doing a great work, what God called me to do on this wall. I'm not coming down. And some of you need to tell your distractions, look, I'm doing a great work, and I can't come down. Some of you are trying to get out of debt, and so you're bringing a brown bag to the office for lunch. And they're making fun of you for bringing that brown bag. You're a little embarrassed for bringing that brown bag. You're trying to save money. You might went through our, our course, Financial Peace University here, and you're trying to save money to get out of debt for a season. So you're, you're willing to sacrifice now for the reward that is to come later, just like Moses. It's a biblical principle. And when you do that, you need to tell those people, look, I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. Some people might start asking you, why are you staying so pure in this world full of lust? Why are you saving yourself? yourself for the one that you're going to marry why look you need to tell them i'm doing a great work and i can't come down some people might be going why are you trying to be a stay-at-home mom you need to tell them look i'm doing a great work in this season god has called me to this too will pass but for now i'm doing the work that god called me to do i'm doing a great work and i can't come down. Look, when I was in high school, if you've been around, you've heard me tell this story before, but I, for those that might not have heard this, I, I'll, I'll share it one more time. When I was in high school and, and, and trying to live for Christ and trying to figure this whole thing out, and I made the, the varsity baseball team, and at that time, we went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and on Wednesday night, I had to be to church for like 7, 7.30, and our practice ran to like 6.30, and so my parents had to talk to my coach and go, hey, um, we need to get him out early on Wednesdays because he's got to go to church. He's going to be at church. And so the coach obliged. He, he respected it. And so I would leave early on Wednesdays. And when I would go to leave, some of these boys on the team, man, they didn't hold back. They, they started jeering, calling me church and preacher kid and all this kind of stuff and and so I was getting jeers and it was a little embarrassing sometimes but I went ahead on and got in the dugout packed my stuff up and went on well a little while after that things started happening in that dugout as I was packing up I called it dugout prayer deals not dug out drug deals but dug out prayer deals because i would be packing my bag and someone else would come in and they go hey pray for my grandfather um when you go to church tonight they slip on back out like they didn't want nobody to see what we were doing but he was telling me to pray look i am proud i'm glad now looking back i'm glad now that my parents made the stand they made even though i might not have understood it fully then they took a stand even though it might embarrass me some in front of my friends they took a stand to let me know what did it tell me that there's something greater than baseball there's something greater that we should be going after it trained me in other words train up a child it showed me priorities train up a child in the way he or she should go and when they get older they won't depart from it now i can look back and be thankful thankful that they did that look rick warren he wrote a book years ago called Purpose Driven Life. Purpose Driven Life. 
And then several other things came out. Purpose-driven church, purpose-driven marriage. I mean, he, there was, a lot of purpose-driven stuff came out of this. Purpose-driven. Even to the point where he wrote purpose in, in celebrate recovery, a, a thing that some of our guys were, are attempting to go through. And so he wrote these kind of things purpose-driven because purpose drives you through It'll drive you through some of the areas, through life, through some of the, the, the marriage situations, through the things that we have to go to. And look, here's what I'm saying. I believe that we need some purpose-driven parents. Oh, yeah. We need some parents that will choose purpose over being popular with their children in this day and age we live in. I'm glad that I had parents that chose my purpose over being popular with me. You see, they didn't let me make the call on whether I should go to church or not. If I lived in their house, I was going to church. And that meant something. It drove something. It trained something inside of me. It wasn't going to let, They cared about me. I knew they did. Even though I might not have liked what they were doing, I knew they cared about me. They were doing it for my good. You see, you can't always be their friend and be their trainer. Sometimes you got to go against. Sometimes you got to be the parent, not the friend. Sometimes you got to go after their purpose and train them so that they can fulfill their purpose in life. Which leads me to the second thing. Purpose pushes you through the pain. Purpose, it drives, it pushes you. You see, the pathway to your purpose is paved with pain. You need to hear that again. The pathway to your purpose is going to be paved with some pain along the way. But that pain prepares you for the purpose. I mean, we see it in all the examples in the Bible, in Moses' example, in David's example, in Nehemiah's example that we talked about, Mother's Day, Esther's example, in Mary's example, as she was being jeered because she was pregnant and the Holy Spirit had done it and it wasn't a man and they thought they had done it out of wedlock. And so a lot of stuff was going on with Mary. Jesus the pathway to his purpose was paved with pain. But the scripture tells us that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, the pain, scorned its shame. See, you always are going to have to push through. Purpose will push you through the pain. Doing what God calls you to do, others won't like it. The enemy won't like it. They won't understand. But purpose, friends won't understand. Sometimes family won't understand. But purpose pushes you through the pain. Look, when I was trying to be a pastor, there was people that as I was going up, some of them believed in me and spoke into me and pushed me through in some of those painful areas. Some of them told me, hey, just go. You can't make it as an athlete. Just go be a, um, a referee. Just go be, be, be something, in, in, include, be a coach. Do something in sports. But they never told me to go through and, and be a pastor. But people... People won't necessarily dictate your purpose. Allow God. Choose purpose over popularity. Do what God called you to do. You see, there's purpose in pain. Don't miss the purpose in the pain. Don't miss it. Don't miss the purpose in the pain. In this pandemic that we are in, don't miss God's purpose in this situation. I had to ask God, God... What are you trying to speak to us during this time? This thing that you've allowed to take place? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to speak to me, my family, our church body, the people of God? What are you trying to speak to us through that? And as he stilled everything and stopped everything from going on, the first thing I believe he started speaking to me, to us, is be still and know that I am God. Understand that I'll shut it all down to let you know who I am and what I, what I, the relationship I want with you. Be still and know. The second thing he, he started speaking to me was having me to reevaluate what was important. Reevaluate what was important. And the truly the thing that was important was the relationships. Not things. The relationships were important. Relationships with him. My faith. Relationships with my family. Relationships with friends. He took all those away, so to speak, from a lot of us in society so that we can understand that community and connection is very important. And we took it for granted. But we have to push through. And I believe we'll see God provide on the other side of it. I believe we can come back better because purpose pushes us through the pain. Moms, you understand that. Those that have given birth, you understand that. But us as, as, as men, sometimes we don't get it. 
See, mothers, having a baby, you might have thought it's not that bad. Husband, you might have thought it's not that bad. But I come to understand that it's like pushing a watermelon out of a garden hose. That's right, pushing a watermelon out of a garden hose. And I would go, why? Why, moms, do you want to do this? Because there's purpose in the pain. Purpose pushes you through the pain. So how do you handle the critics? When so many people don't like you, nothing's coming easy. Purpose pushes you through. It drives you. That thing that you want to start up and it gets hard and you don't give up because purpose pushes you through. It drives you through the pain. It pushes you to the point where critics can't stop you. Obstacles won't deter you. People and the pain won't slow you down. You get up early, you work harder, you stay later. Why? Because purpose drives you through. It pushes you through. So you need to know, you can't. But with Christ, I can. You won't. I won't. But with Christ, you will. You see, purpose diminishes distractions. The second was purpose pushes or drives you through the pain. Here's the last one. Here's the third one before we wrap up today. Purpose empowers you to please God. Purpose empowers you to please God. God's divine purpose, His plan for your life, it will empower you, drive you to please God. You see, when Pharaoh, when he tried to stop Moses, Moses wasn't deterred. When the people complained, when they criticized, when they rebelled against Moses who was trying to set them free, Moses stayed on task. You see, purpose empowers you to please God. Not people, please God. Not circumstances, but please God. Not a pandemic, mm -mm, not a plague, but to please God. Purpose empowers you to please God. Here's a New Testament example I'd love to use as we wrap up today. Peter and those other apostles, after Jesus had died on the cross, after he went back to heaven, after the day of Pentecost, they went out proclaiming and preaching in Christ's name, teaching in the name of Jesus. And these religious leaders, these Pharisees, they came out and they said, stop, quit teaching in that name. That name is <laughs> funny. You can't, you couldn't teach in that name 2,000 years ago. What name? The name of Jesus. And now 2,000 years later, that name is the name that riles everybody up, that gets them all worked up. You see, you can, you can talk about God. You can talk about a supreme being. You can talk about a higher power. You can talk about spirituality. But when you mention that name, when you mention the name of Jesus, all of a sudden, it all hits the fan. Everything breaks loose. Everybody's all worked up. Why is that? Because that name is the name above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Not at the name of Muhammad, not at the name of Buddha, but at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Man, that name is powerful. Purpose empowers you to please God. Here's what those boys, Peter and the other apostles, here's how they um, replied to those religious leaders that told them to come out and stop. It's in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. It says, Peter and the other disciples replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. Another translation says, rather than man. We must obey God rather than human beings or rather than man. You see, we can't please everyone, but we can please God. Today, I want us to choose purpose over popularity. Those, those Peter and those apostles, they chose purpose over being popular. We need to make that choice today in the life we live. You see, let me, let me bring back to our memory. Reiterate Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26. Moses, he, Moses, regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value then the treasures of Egypt, then the approval of the people of Egypt, then the acceptance of Pharaoh and the, pe and the people in Egypt over lots of nice things that he could have got staying in royalty. He chose Christ. 
and thought it was of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward, the approval of God, being with God. See, here's what I want you to know today as we begin to pray together. Here's what I want you to know. There's value in being liked by people. There's greater value in being approved by God. There's value in having fun with friends. But there's greater value in being faithful to God. There's value in starting something important. But there's greater value in finishing it with God's purpose in mind. You see, there's value in comfort. But there's greater value in calling. And there's value in being popular with people. But there's greater value in serving God's purpose in your life. So to the moms that are raising kids, to the dads even, that are raising kids and you're neck deep in diapers, you're keeping your eye on the prize that is before you as you're training the child. You're being faithful in the moment that God has called you to. In the season, that season will pass. You'll be in another season you're being faithful right where you're at you're wanting to get out of debt you're sacrificing every day you're looking forward to your reward one day maybe you fostered a child you're foster parents and it's the hardest thing and the greatest rewarding thing all at the same time because purpose pushes you through the pain of dealing with some of those days that you got to deal with those children on some days you're living for Jesus people are laughing friends are laughing even family could be laughing and not understanding they don't understand why you do what you do understand this you can't please everyone but you can please God that's why today I want you to choose purpose over popularity understand that the decisions you make today will determine your tomorrow the decisions that you make today Choosing purpose today over the fleeting pleasures of sin. Choosing purpose today instead of all the other things that you could get right now. Because you want the reward that is to come. You're being faithful with a little so he can make you ruler over much. You're choosing purpose over popularity. I used to say this all the time when I was a youth pastor talking to teenagers all the time. I would say, show me your friends today. I'll show you your future of tomorrow. That's for all of us. In other words, the decisions that you make today are going to determine your future. The influence you have around you is going to determine your future. Choose purpose over popularity. You see, there's power in purpose. Power in purpose. Purpose eliminates distractions. Purpose pushes you through the pain. It drives you. Purpose empowers us to please God. That's for every one of us today. We can't please everyone, but we can please God. And today you're going to tell me, I need to do just that. I need to please Him. I want His approval over men's. I need to, to, to get through that phase of life where I was going to please even me or even people. I was looking for approval from everyone else, but I want the greater reward that God has for me. I want to fulfill His purpose today and then tomorrow in the next day to the point where I'm fulfilling the greater purpose for my life. And I know it starts with a relationship with Him today. Maybe you want to give your life to Christ today and if that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me in just one moment. But maybe you've prayed that prayer today and you're going to tell me I've, I've not made the greatest decisions in certain areas of my life and I know today God's trying to grow me in those areas that I've looked for acceptance and popularity in a lot of places that I shouldn't have. And today I want to choose His purpose over popularity. I, I need him to work in this situation in my life. And I, I want him to do just that today. I want to lay those things down. Pick his plan up. If you want that prayer today with me uh, as well, I want you to pray with me here today. And you can just put a hand up in the comment. You can message us if you're doing that. Let us know. Let us know that you're a part of that. You want that in your life. I'm choosing a greater purpose. This pandemic has shown us that there's a greater purpose than the popularity that this world has to offer. Let us know you're making that prayer with us today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much again that you chose us, purpose, 
over popularity with me. You sacrificed Jesus. You sacrificed your life for us. You chose sacrifice for the greater reward of having us as sons and daughters, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we thank you for that today. Some of us need to lay down our life just as you laid down yours. We ask you to forgive us of our sin, of our past. We thank you that you died on the cross and rose again for our sake. We accept you as Savior, but also the Lord. God, we thank you that you save us, but you also lead us as the Lord of our life. We don't want to take the lead any longer. We, we lay our life down. We open up our heart. We take our hands off and ask you to come in and lead us from this day forward. God, so many of us need, need your purpose to drive us today. God, allow what we should learn through this time of, of um, crisis that we should get closer to you and about relationships today. God, not about the things. And not about popularity and approval and what others think about us at Facebook and others in the job. God, we want to choose you today. God, so move in our life. Holy Spirit, move in our life today. Solidify us in Christ today. Make us one in you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for healing homes. We thank you for healing finances. We thank you most of all for healing relationships and having us closer to you. We give you praise for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, today... Thank you for joining with us on Mother's Day. Let me tell you this. Um, if you are somebody who is connecting with us, uh, if it's for the first time, fill out our digital connect card at weareonecity.com slash connect card. You can do that there. And just tell us what size shirt. We'd love to send you one in the mail. But even if you haven't, uh, you can still look regular tenders. You can fill that um, connect card. Let us know you are part of that with us as well. And look, here's an opportunity for us to give. We're going to pray over our giving here in just a moment. But at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the uh, different ways in which you can give. Thank you so much. I, I can't tell you how much I'm pleased. I I'm, I'm blown away by your generosity every week. Thank you for being faithful to God and the calling and, and partnering with the vision here that we're able to bless and do what you've called us to do. Even the giveaways we're going to do on Mother's Day and the different things that we've been able to do throughout the community. Thank you so much. We can't do that without you. You are doing that. Thank you for honoring God and being faithful in that relationship. And so let me pray with us today. Father, we thank you for blessing us and allowing us to give back what is already yours, God. We don't want to take it for ourselves, but we give back to you today. We ask you to bless it and bless those that are giving. Bless it, further it, God. Bless your kingdom with it today. And we give you praise for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, take a moment. I'm going to be with you in just a minute in the outro to, to tell you thank you again, and then I'll be with you in the comments. God bless. Have a great Mother's Day. Moms, we celebrate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us today on Mother's Day. Let me just say again, moms, we love you. We celebrate you. We're so grateful for you and all you do and sacrifice for us. And I just want to reiterate a couple of things with you today. Look, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, Kids City TV. Get all the kids around Kids City TV today at 6 o'clock. Jump on Facebook, jump on YouTube, jump on those things and be a part of Kids City TV today. Also, Wednesday night, ways to connect with us. Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, prayer with me and Pastor McKenzie. We look forward to always jumping on with you and hearing and praying with you, your requests and your praises. We're hearing a lot of those in now. We're so thankful for that. Jump on with us Wednesday night, prayer. Look, connect groups. You're going to have a chance now to jump on weareonecity.com slash groups. Go there and sign up for any connect group. Jump in with us today. We're going to show you how to do it as we're getting back together and gearing up these groups together. Look, it's important for you to do that. And here's the last thing. I hear that there's a video being made that should be coming out real soon that's called Moms Doing Dad Jokes. Look for that. We'll see you soon. God bless you. Thanks again for being with us today.